And so this is going to be our topic for this afternoon, the strength in quietness. So actually in scripture, this, was be, uh, this is also being um, stated in some of the verses in the scripture that we are going to look at this afternoon. And this is something of a topic that probably some of us are encountering or experiencing this kind of an attitude or this behavior, especially in the ecclesia. We have brothers, we have sisters that they are behind the scene helping in the ecclesia. May mga kapatid tayo na hindi man, natin, hindi man sila yung makikita natin in the pedestals. But there are brothers and sisters who are there behind the scene helping in coordinating and helping in assisting the work in the ecclesia or even helping in uh, uh, preaching the word of God, which is the most important rule that we should do, which is being, um, being um, be, uh, inuto sa atin na ating Panginoon sa Kristo and to, to preach the gospel. Yan. So this is an attitude that probably um, medyo ano siya, medyo makikita natin na Marami naman sa atin ang katulad nito. Ito tinatawag na strength in quietness. Because it's in quietness that we can really have strength. Yan. So if we, yan. So quietness is actually a result. This is a result rather than a means. So it's, it's a result of something that you are, uh, you're convinced of. When you're quiet, you're convinced, you know what, would ha- what will happen. Alam mo na yung dulo nito. When you're quiet, tahimik ka kasi you're confident. You're confident that walang mas- ma- ma- masamang mangyayari. Hindi ka nagpa-fluster. Hindi ka na nagiging nervyoso or hindi ka naguguluhan. Because you know that it is going to be a good result. And quietness is an attitude of knowing that you're confident, that you have a trust, that everything will go in order or everything will go in good. Lahat ng mga yun. So it's something that um, siguro makikita nyo na yan. Na, that, that, yan yung pag ng topic natin na if we have faith, if we have trust, we have the confidence and we are quiet. Hindi na tayo, like for example, what is happening in the world today? Maraming mga nangyayaring mga uh, katulad nito, pandemia, katulad nito yung mga Nangyayari sa Ukraine, these are sign of the times that our Lord will come very soon. But we never flustered. Hindi tayo na, na, naguguluhan. Hindi tayo, uh, yung iba ay talagang, ano na, uh, kumbaga, they, they are many nervous na sila sa mga katulad na nangyayari ngayon. But as we, we're still quiet, we are still composed because we know that these are all work of God. We know that these are things that we that we should experience, that we should encounter while we are waiting for Christ. Na ito ay mga sign na malapit na siya, that our waiting is almost over. Yan. So malapit na siya. Another, it is the quiet forces that have the greatest effect. At alam natin yan, it is in the quiet voice, in the still small voice of God. Yan ang gumanap. Yan, alam natin yung sinabi ng Diyos kay Elijah. Yan. It is in the calm, quiet life that the greatest strength is found. Alam natin yan na we, even our Lord Jesus Christ, in His busy days, times ng kanyang ministry, naghahan, uh, gumag, nag, talagang naglalaan siya ng panahon na makap, mapag-isa siya, magkaroon siya ng quiet time na sa, na me times sa kanyang sarili para ipander ang mga nangyayari and especially to talk to God. Even tayo, gumagaan ang ating mga pakiramdam kapag tayo ay nasa tahimik na lugar, nag-iisa tayo at lalong-lalong na kapag tayo ay nakikipag-usap sa Diyos. So it's in the quietness that we will be strengthened. It is in the quietness that we find we find strength. So if therefore we want to be strong, we must learn to be quiet. Kung gusto natin maging matatag ang ating pananampalataya, we should also learn to be quiet. 
Uh, yan yung mga ano dyan. La- sabi nga na last talk, last mistake. But that's not, that's not for the world. Ano, no? uh, yan yung the, the, the mga prinsipyo ng mundo. But it's really, when you're quiet, mas ano eh, y- y- makikita mo yung mga nangyayari na you can analyze things. Yan, you can discern what is right and wrong when you are quiet. And this is actually an attitude of someone of Christ's disciples. Of the 12 disciples selected by our Lord Jesus Christ to assist him closely in his earthly ministry, may mga iilan lang sa kanila na alam natin yung kanilang mga contribution or tulong na ginawa nila kasama sa Panginoong Iso Kristo. But we know little about Andrew. Yan. So Andrew, we can find this kind of attitude which is strength in quietness. Na sinabi yan in Isaiah na in quietness and in confidence or in trust is your strength. Yan. So ito yung strength din ni Andrew. Being quiet lang siya. Nasa behind the scene lang siya, hindi siya masyadong nakikita. But but we have encounter, meron din tayong mga records that that you know, uh, speak about uh, talk about uh, Andrew, but very few. Yan. So, yan yung uh, what do we know about Andrew? Uh, actually, I choose this topic because it's so mga topic ng mga speakers were actually character studies. So, sabi ko, uh, mga prophets, minor prophets, mga ganun. So, I, I think I should also go with with or the disciples, the apostles. So, so what do we know about Andrew? Yeah, and Andrew would have grown up in Bethsaida. Alam natin yan, in Bethsaida, if you're going to look at in John chapter 1, verse 44, ang sabi dito, now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And so ito yung lugar nila. And learning the truth of the scripture, presumably from faithful parents. Masasabi natin na lumalaki sila o lumaki sila na may mga magulang na faithful or mga mananampalataya or nakakaalam sa patutuhanan or sa ebanghelyo or nakakaunawa na there will be a Messiah who will be coming. Yan. Kasi yan yung hinihintay nila eh. Yan. So together with his brother Simon, his elder brother na si Simon Peter, kasama niya yan. Now, to know more about Andrew, 13 times his name is mentioned in New Testament. In 13 times na yon, 6, he is being referred to as Simon Peter's brother. So sa 13 times na yon na nabanggit siya, 6 na beses binanggit doon na he is Simon Peter's brother. But in contrast, hindi natin makikita in scripture that Peter being addressed or introduced as Andrew's brother. So dyan pala makikita natin na Andrew is someone who is just behind the scene. Hindi siya yung kumbaga who is the leader, who is more my bosses or mas uh, kinikilala, it's Peter. Usually naman even in, in reality in our life, it's all, always the eldest ang nakikilala. Like for example, in the school, uh, paano... Uh, paano mo makikilala ang tao uh, ay anak ni ano yan ay kapatid ni ano yan yan so but but this one we can really uh, you can analyze here na talagang si Ando is someone na hindi siya yung head it's he is not the head but dito nakikita sa 13 times na yan is Ando is actually the first one who followed Jesus yan So Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, the first time na ma-encounter natin siya, mababasa natin yan sa John chapter 1, verse 40. Yan, kung babasahin natin dito, sabi dito, ang isa sa dalawang nakarinig ng pagsasalita ni Juan Bautista ay at sumunod sa kanya ay si Andres na kapatid ni Simon Pedro. Yan yung pagsabi dyan, na si Andres na kapatid ni Simon Pedro. So we encounter Andrew being introduced as Simon's brother a day before he finds his brother and introduces him to Christ and even to us. Sino ang nagpakilala din sa atin kay Pedro? It was Andrew. Si Andrew ang unang uh, biglang 
uh, dumating sa eksena or in the scene si Pe- Peter because of Andrew. Because Andrew rushes, hinanap niya ang kanyang kapatid para sabihin sa kanila na nakita na nila ang Misaya. Yan. Or the unwanted one. When you talk about Messiah is the unwanted one. At this scene in John chapter 1 na ito, ito yung panahon kung saan uh, kasakasama ni uh, ang, kasak- ang, ang kasama dito is si Juan Bautista kasama si Andrew and the other apostle or disciple. And that one na hindi na mention is actually John. In the whole chapter of John, hindi niya binanggit ang kanyang pangalan because he is the writer. Okay? He is the writer. Kaya wala tayong mababasa na si Juan na, bina- na mababasa natin sa, ch- sa chapter ng sa bu- libro ng John because he is the writer. So yung other disciple na sinabi John, it's actually him, the writer, John. So yan yung ano natin dito na uh, ang sabi ni um, puntahan natin ang chapter 1 verse 29 ang sabi dito ni John the Baptist the next day John said Jesus coming unto him and said behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world this is he of whom I said after me a man which is preferred before me for he was before me yan yung sabi niya and in verse 30 uh 35 yan ulit uh, in chapter 1 nang kinabukasan ay muling nakatayo si Juan at ang dalawa sa kanyang mga alagad so may dalawa siyang alagad yan yung si Andres na nabasa natin dito sa 40 yan Uh, sa 40 na si Andres at yung sinabi ko kanina na the other one na hindi pinangalanan is actually John because he is the writer and sabi dito at kanyang tiningnan si Jesus samantalang siya ay naglalakad at sinabi Yan. and the two were there si John at saka si Andres si Andrew narito ang kordero ng Diyos at narinig siyang nag- ayan so in verse 37, sabi dito, at narinig siyang nagsalita ng dalawang alagad. So narinig si Juan Bautista nung sinabi na narito ang kordero ng Diyos. So narinig siya ng dalawa. At sila ay nagsisisunod kay Jesus. At sila ay sumunod sa Panginoong Heso Kristo. Yan yung ginawa ng dalawang yon Yan, yun yung nakita natin dito. So another na encounter natin kay Andrew is actually we can read it in chapter 6 ng John verse 8. Yan yung encounter naman natin sa kanya where Andrew being addressed again as Simon Peter's brother na si And- Andres na kapatid ni Simon Pedro which has happened during the feeding of 5,000 men. So mamaya titingnan natin yan. So Andrew's calling how he followed Jesus. Katulad na ng basa natin kanina, when Andrew first appeared, he is already already a deeply spiritual man. Makikita natin na ano na siya, uh, uh, kilala na niya ang Diyos at alam na niya ang Ibanghelyo, alam na niya na may darating na Misayas, alam niya na may darating na Christ, uh, na Kristo. So makikita natin dito na Dahil siya ay isang alagad ni Juan Bautista. So isa siya sa mga masusugid na alagad ni Juan Bautista. And to note, during this time, he was one of the two disciples accompanying John the Baptist. Only the two. Dalawa lang yun ang kasama ni Juan. Where are the rest? Simon may well also have been a disciple, but it was Andrew spending time with John the Baptist. Masasabi natin na si Simon Pedro ay kasama din siya or isa din, isa din siya sa mga disipulo ni Juan Bautista. Ngunit sa ating nabasa dito, Peter was not around during this time when John the Baptist announced or nung siya ay sumigaw na narito ang kordero ng Diyos. Wala siya sa panahon ito. And only John and Andrew. Yan. At nung nangyaring ito, so yan yung makikita natin dito na you know, uh, Andrew is always there. Nandun lang siya. Hindi man siya 
si Kat, hindi man siya yung talagang malaki ang kanyang pangalan, but he's always present. Like someone in the Ecclesia always, always present, rain or shine, uh, ma, ma, ano, mahirap man ang sitwasyon, but always present. Nandun siya, pero hindi siya napapansin. Hindi siya ganun ka. Uh, someone who is in the front row. Yan. So in verse 30, uh, for 38, ating makikita dito na, uh, sa 37 na they follow Jesus. Sinundan nila. Nung sinabi ni Juan na narito ang kordero ng Diyos. Sumunod sila and they follow Jesus. Yung narinig nila si Juan na nagsabi nito. Then Jesus turned and saw them following. Malikod ang Panginoon sa Kristo at tinanong niya, At nakita niya na sumusunod sila at tinanong, ano ang inyong hinahanap? What seek ye? Yan ang sabi niya. What seek ye? Anong hinahanap niyo? Ngunit, ano ang sagot nila? Did they answer them the question? Hindi. But there, uh, yung sagot nila is more of enthusiasm na gusto nilang sumunod sa kanya. Kasi ang tanong, saan ka nakatira? Uh, ang tinanong nila, Rabbi, sabi nila, or in, uh, ang ibig sabihin ay guro. It's not a rabbi na katulad ng mga tay, titulo ng mga ano ha, yung mga rabbi in during our time na may mga rabbi in, 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 in Israel. But this rabbi is just teacher, sabi niya, guro. And saan ka tumitira? Yan. So that that is the scene. What seek ye? Sabi ng Panginoon sa Kristo. And they answered in a form of a question also. Rabbi, where dwellest thou? The question portrays deep desire to spend time with him. Yan na gusto nilang uh, no, uh, kasama siya. So ngayon, what happened is, uh, he said unto them, sinabi ni Jesus sa kanila, magsiparito kayo at inyong makikita. Sumunod kayo. Yan. So in, 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 in paraphrasing, it's follow me and you will know. Yan. You will see. Yan, yun. Sumunod sila. And makikita natin dito in, the, in verse 39, they came at nagsiparoon nga sila at nakita kung saan siya tumitira at sila'y nagsitirang kasama niya saan, uh, ng araw na yaon noong mag, uh, mag-iisang, uh, mag, mag-iikasampu na ng oras. So mga ten, ano na, ng, magagabi na. So kasama, sumama sila at natulog sila doon. So, during the time, we don't have a record ko ano ang nangyari, but for sure, alam natin yan na they had dinner together and they had a conversation and most probably or sure tayo na that Jesus was teaching them about the kingdom of God because that is what he's doing, teaching the kingdom of God. And doon, makikita natin na habang nakikinig itong si Uh, Andrew and John listening to Jesus all the talks about the kingdom of God. For sure they are yung yung chanila na ano na kumukulo na sa kag, ano sa excitement nila sa nalalaman at narinig nila. So they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. So that is how Andrew na paano siya sumunod sa ating Panginoong si Kristo. Nakita natin dito na it was just one, uh, isang sabi lang ni Juan Bautista, narito ang kordero ng Diyos. So makikita natin dito how uh, si Rever, uh, paano, makala, gaano kalaki yung reverence or respeto, yung paniniwala ni, ni Andrew at ni John kay Juan Bautista as their, uh, as their teacher na ito. Uh, narito ang kordero ng Diyos, the Lamb of God. So sumunod ka agad sila. At hindi na nila tinanong kung anong kalagayan niya or I mean, tinanong ay yung ano, anong hinahanap. But what they did is just they asked him kung saan nakatira. That means they wanted to spend time with him. Yan. And yun nga, nagkasama sila. So that is how the first time we encountered the first conversion or can convert into Christ or being a uh, Christian, and that is Andrew and John. So, isa si Andrew sa mga una. And Andrew's enthusiasm, katulad ng sabi natin kanina, na habang nakikinig siya, so, might be during that night, hindi siya, that they spend the whole night, 
talking about the kingdom of God, talking about the words of God with Jesus. At yun, uh, ano na, uh, gustong-gusto na niyang umuwi at sabihin. So, in most probably, madaling araw pala, malis na ito. We don't really have the record, but that is in, in the scenario, in reality, ganun ang magiging pangyayari. Na kapag meron kang gustong ibalita, gusto mo maagang-maaga masasabi mo at sa atin, it, text na itatawag ka agad. Uh, kahit nga maling balita. <laughs> so, the two rushes off to tell Peter. Yan, yung dalawa. Magmadali sila. At in, mababasa natin dito in verse 41. Ah, basahin muna natin yung 40 again. Ang isa sa dalawang nakarinig ng pagsalita ni Juan Bautista at sumunod sa kanya ay si Andres na kapatid ni Simon Pedro. Una niyang nasumpungan ang kanyang sariling kapatid na si Simon Pedro at kanyang sinabi, yan, nasumpungan namin ang Isaiah na kung liliwanagin ay ang Kristo or the Anointed One. So yan ang nakita natin dito na they both rushed together. Nagmadali sila para ibalita ito. But sa excitement ni, ni Andrew, sa unang na una niya nakita ang kanyang kapatid na si Pedro. Yan at sinabi niya kay Pedro na we have found the Messiah. Andrew grow, uh, bursts into the house and declares breathlessly, we have found the Messiah. So ayan, so yan yung nakita natin dito na the first uh, kaya Andrew is also considered as the first evangelist. Yan. I saw him with my own eyes, the Lamb of God who, take, who will take away the sin of the world. Yan yung sabi ni Andrew kay, kay Peter. So probably yan yung sinabi niya. But ito lang ano natin dito na we have found the Messiah. And yan yung maano natin dito ni Andrew is the first evangelist. Yan. Siya yung unang nagdala. Bring people to Christ. Yeah, and such was Andrew's convert, conviction that here was the long-awaited Messiah. Yung matagal na nilang hinihintay, matagal na nilang naririnig na sinasabi ni Juan Bautista. Then alam natin na si Juan Bautista na siya ang maghahanda sa daan ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. So makikita natin dito na Andrew was always hearing this about the Messiah, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. Yan, who will take away the sin of the world, who will give light to the Jews, who will free them and uh, magtatay ulit ng kaharian. And ito, nakita nila. So they, here was their long-awaited Messiah that he put his utmost finding, uh, finding Simon and bringing to Jesus, the first to bring new convert to Christ. Yan, yan yung si Juan Bautista. So what happened next? In verse 42, and he brought him to Jesus. Yan na yun. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is in, uh, being interpreted as a stone. So yan. So siya mismo. It's, it, uh, it was Andrew na nagdala doon sa uh, kay Panginoong Sokristo, kay Pedro. Si Pedro din lang kay sa ating Panginoong Sokristo. So it was Andrew. Yeah. So this is the key for us to know Andrew. Of a few encounters we have about Andrew, we find him always bringing people to Christ. Na yan yung, in many, many cases na record kay Andrew, it, it is always him na siya yung mga naglalapit ng tao sa Panginoon sa Kristo. Nilalapit niya ang tao sa Panginoon sa Kristo. So Andrew should have been the leader than Peter. So dapat sana, but we have these three uh, mem- uh, apostles that are being mentioned as leaders, Peter, James, and John. Bakit hindi si Andrew? But it, it, alam natin, yeah, it was Andrew who actually presented or introduced Peter to Christ. And it was Andrew who converted him to Christ. So yan yung ano natin dito. But katulad ng sabi natin ka na, there is quietness in him. And because of that quietness, he has this strong force. He has this strength and confidence. Did Andrew harbor resentment? Uh, na ano ba siya? Nagselos ba siya? Or nainis ba siya sa mga pagkakataong ito na hindi siya kasama sa Panginoong Sokristo 
in many cases na mga special event or mga nangyari sa highlight in the life of Christ. Katula, Andrew would have known that his brother would overshadow him. Mal- alam sana ni Andrew yan na kung ipapakilala niya si Pedro sa Panginoon si Kristo, maaring mawala siya sa eksena or mawala siya, hindi na siya mapapansin dahil alam niya na Peter is really has this strong personality. Meron siya strong personality. Alam niya yan and he's the older bro- he's older than him. But hindi ito nag-hinder sa kanya to, to, to introduce Peter to Christ because he knew that Peter also look up, looking for this Messiah who long waiting for, for, for the Messiah to come. So occasions, Andrew, na behind the scene na siya kung sign in the background, yung katulad nung hindi na natin bubuklat in, in, in the healing of the Jairus daughter. Yan. Uh, yan, katulad nito. Uh, pina, uh, pinalabas yung mga mourners. Yung mga, ang tawag dyan, yung mga mag-aayuno kasi may binabayaran sila mag-aayuno noon. Ngayon, pumasok ang Panginoon si Cristo, ang kasama lang ni si Pedro, si Juan at si Santiago, Peter, James, and John. And the other disciples, the the, the, the sixth, uh, wait, yeah, the, the <laughs> ilan ba sila? The eight disciples, nasa labas sila. And isa sa mga nandoon is Andrew, but it's actually Andrew, one of the first disi- first person who followed Christ. So that would give an importance sana siya, pero hindi. He, he he was not there and ito yung mga scene na sa sa part niya maaaring masasabi natin in in ano naman eh, humanly speaking makaka-feel ka ng ganun but hindi ito uh, hinayaan ni hindi ito nag hindi dinaig si si Andrew ng ganitong feeling na katulad nito resentment eh, in real, humanly speaking mararamdaman ng lahat yan that's really what we are at Uh, for me, I, I believe na naramdaman niya yan. But hindi ito, hindi siya kinain sa ganun na emosyon na yun, yung pity na yun na naramdaman niya. And another, when Christ ascends at the amount of, uh, in the Mount of Transfiguration, wala din siya doon. Wala din siya. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane on the fate, uh, fateful night of betrayal, he was then there. At nung time na yun, for sure, uh, Andrew, ano siya, medyo nag-alala or for sure nag-aalala, nag-aalala din siya sa Panginoon si Kristo na alam niya na sa panahon ito, alam na niya na malapit na mawala ang kanilang Panginoon at malungkot ang mukha ng Panginoon at he, he wanted to comfort, comfort Christ, he wanted to be there on his side in this time of you know low, low part of Christ pero he wasn't given a chance. It was only Peter, James, and John. Ito yung mga occasions na hindi siya kasama but you know he is one of the two he is una siyang mga nag una siya na, na naging disipulo kasi kay Pedro at ni James sino ba ang nagsabi kay James it was him and also John sino nagsabi kay Pedro it was him and John so yan yung makikita natin dito but katulad na nakita natin dito yan uh, hindi siya kasama but did Andrew harbor resentment Andrew's attitude, how easy would have been for Andrew to complain. Madali lang sa kanya ang magsabi, Panginoon, bakit ayaw mo akong isama? Ay gusto kong sumama. Mga ganun. Kasi isa sa mga unang sumunod sa Panginoon. And after all, where was Simon when John declares Jesus to be the one for which they were searching? Nasaan si Pedro nung panahong sinabi ni Juan Bautista na ito ang Lamb of God? Wala siya doon. Where would Peter be if it were not for him? Nasaan si Pedro sana ngayon kung hindi dahil sa kanya, kung hindi niya pinikilala at hinabi sa kay Pedro na ito, nakita namin ang Mesaya. Alam namin kung nasaan siya. Yan. But we do not see him a hint of this thinking when we look at Andrew. Wala tayong makikita ganito na sa kanyang isipan. Instead, we see a man who is all too aware of his own inadequacy before God. So makikita natin dito, he was still there. Hindi pa rin siya lumayo. Hindi siya uh, marami nagsialisan. Ayan, marami nang nagsialisan. Ngunit nanatili siya. And that's the reason he still belong on the 
disciples of Christ. Maraming mga nagiging disipulo noon, pero there were only 12 who remained faithful to Christ. Yan. So, yan yung nakita. And Andrew is one of them. In the mga sinario na hindi siya masyado na bigyan ng importance, but hindi ito, hindi ito nag-harbor sa kanya para lumayo siya, sumama sa mga hindi na uh, suma hindi na sumama at nakasama siya sa mga umalis na. But ito na instead we see him as a man who is all too aware of his own inadequacy. Every one of us meron tayong mga inadequacy. Hindi tayo sapat. May mga pagkukulang tayo. And Ando knows that of himself. Yan. And he even shoulder with humility the rule placed upon him. Yan. Nanatili na siyang disipulo. He was a leader, but he had a servant's heart. He was a leader because he was the one who bring Peter to Jesus and many others, even the Gentiles. It was Andrew, makikita natin mamaya, na there are Gentiles na inilapit niya sa Panginoon sa Kristo at alam natin, Peter would never do that. Yan. At pinagalitan pa siya ni Pablo sa ginawa niya. But Andrew, even in the start, in the beginning, he's one of a disciple of a Jew that bring people to Christ, even Gentiles. Yan. Makikita na he was really a leader, but he had a servant's heart. Mas ano siya, mas gusto niya yung, ano lang siya, yung in a subtle way. He was helping in a subtle way. Hindi, hindi masyadong napapansin. He's one who is content to be a doorkeeper in the house of God who needs no recognition from man and never grumbles. He is someone na uh, alam natin yan that The, the, the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, the apostles, they are being promised with a throne in the kingdom. Yan, yung 12 na yun. But from the start of this, in the time when Andrew with Christ, in the time when Andrew was in his ministry, when Christ is no longer around, still, he was still a servant. But, you know, I know for sure, may alam, alam nyo din kung gaano ang influence ng, ng ni, ni Andrew in, in Christianity. Yan, ang laki ng influence niya in Western countries. Yan, so here is one who is content to be a doorkeeper in the house of God who needs no recognition from man and never grumbles, but gets on with his responsibilities in quietness. Nananahimik lang siya. Tahimik lang yung mga pamaraan niya. Hindi nakikita, hindi na broadcast, but he's doing something to help, to help in the ministry of Christ, or you know, in the help in in the ecclesia, or doing the, the the responsibility as a follower of Christ. Quietness and performs them to the best of his ability. Sa kaya niya, and he doesn't do it for recognition from his fellows. Yan. So he even avoided this, avoiding this kind of, of a situation na, di ba, may, may mga taong gano'n na ayaw nilang, ayaw, they, don't, they don't want to be praised. May mga taong gano'n na ayaw nilang anuhin sila, i-praise sila kasi parang, ano eh, parang lumiliit kasi uh, even in the scripture said na uh, wag nating Uh, yeah, uh, uh, kasi w- once we are being praised in this earth, natanggap na natin yung ating gante. Kasi na be- we are already praised. We are re- being recognized. Kaya paano, sa pagbalik na pinunod si Christo, we, we, hindi na kasi tapos na. Natanggap na natin ang recognition na yun. Pero may mga tao talaga din ganun na one day, once they are being praised, parang nangliliit sila. Kasi parang nababawasan yung happiness of what they are doing. Once you're happy what you're doing in helping and assisting doing in the ecclesia, ayaw mo yung naano kayo kasi parang pag na-praise, parang nababawasan. Yung parang, bakit, may ganun, may ganun talaga. For sure, may mga, someone who are there listening who can really confess or feel that this, uh, that way na ayaw nilang ma-praise sila. And he doesn't do it for recognition from his fellows. He does all things to the glory of God. Kasi yan naman talaga, do it all to the glory of God. Yan yung lagi nating isipin. What we are doing is for God's glory, not ours. Kasi lahat naman yun, maniwala kayo sa hindi. Lahat ng mga nagagawa natin, we can never do it without God. Without His 
uh, providence kung hindi yan binigay ng Diyos. Hindi, hindi mangyayari yan. Hindi talaga. So if doesn't if hindi siya nangyari, that's God's will. Yeah. It's all God's will. Yan. Andrew, another incident. Ito yung sabi natin na kat- katulad ng ano natin kanina na he was addressed as Simon Peter's brother. And it happens in the feeding of the 5,000 men. Yan, yung nakita natin. And in this scenario, he was actually leaping to aid. Nagmadali siya para tulungan yung isa sa kanyang closest friend among the disciples of Christ, among the twelve. Because they shared with the same behavior attitude. Now they're medyo full back lang sila. There's someone na uh, low key and there's someone na uh, medyo shy, mga ganun. But, but this time, may makikita natin dito, it's the scenario wherein Christ is feeding the 5,000 men. In Luke 9.10, the desert place belong, belonging to the city beside that. Bibasahin natin yung Luke. In Luke 9, 10. In 10, uh, at nang magsibalik ang mga apostol, ay isinaysay nila sa kanya kung ano, ano mga bagay ang kanilang ginawa. At sila isinaman niya at lumigpit na bukod sa isang bayan na tinatawag na Bitsaida. So pagkatapos nun, because the disciples, they were sent, Uh, to to preach and to heal yeah, and to do miracles also yeah, and so they were sent by a group diba we have two groups na naman noon we have peter james and john magkasama sila yeah nababasa natin yan in mark but the 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 other uh, in mark 3 yan yeah, mababasa natin simon peter james and john then and that is in chapter 16 and 17 then the next ch- verse uh, verses 16 and 17 in the next verse In 1819, the, uh, this is the group of Andrew, and Andrew was being mentioned first. Yan. So makikita natin na he is really a leader, yan, but he is the servant in, in his heart, heart of a servant. So makikita natin dito na it's in this place, ito, in the feeding, is in the, in the city called Bitsaida. Yan. And in John 1.44, this is the... the Philip's hometown and Peter and John. So itong lugar na ito is actually Philip's hometown pero malapit kasi siya sa in the city of Bethsaida kung saan taga doon si Pedro at si Juan de uh, si Pedro at si Andrew and 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 uh, John. So how is it that none of uh, kung titignan natin dito sa John chapter 6 yan verses 7 to 9 In John chapter 6 verses 7 to 9, makikita natin dito ang sabi dito sa verse 6 at ito ay sinabi niya upang shy bu- uh, subukin. It's, it's actually Philip in verse 5 buna at at itinanaw nga ni Jesus ang kanyang mga mata at pagkakita na ang lubhang maraming tao ay lumalapit sa kanya ay sinabi kay Philip, "Saan tayo magsisibili ng tinapay upang mga kakain ng mga ito?" And, and it's actually, Christ was actually proving Philip, katulad ng masasabi natin dito. He was testing Philip, how Philip would, would uh, uh, paano si Philip mag, ano, react on that. that uh, kasi it's actually a training. Yan. You know, ating Pahinus of Cristo, while he was with the 12 disciples, he was trained, he, he trained them. Tinitrain niya sila to be responsible, to know what should they do, kung anong gagawin nila, kung mga ganito mga senaryo, mga ganito senaryo. So, Philip was being tested. He was being proved by Christ. At ito yung sinabi niya upang siya'y subukin sapagkat nalalaman niya sa kanyang sarili kung ano ang kanyang gagawin. Alam niya ang gagawin niya. So, yan, makikita natin this Philip na mahiyain, Philip na tahimik lang din, Uh, siguro in in a scenario na katulad siguro na ano siya na ni-review siya anong gagawin ko anong gagawin ko so what he did he actually calculated he calculated magkano yung gagastusin na pera para pambili ng kakain nila so in verse 
seven, sumagot si Felipe sa kanya, hindi magkakasya sa kanila ang dalawang daang dinaryong tinapay upang mga kain ng kaunti nang kaunti ang bawat isa. Kaunti pa yun ha. Yung dalawang daang dinaryo hindi daw magkakasya. So, kung kaya in that scenario, tumingin si Pilipe. Tumayo siya, tinignan niya ang crowd. O, tinignan niya, parang kukulangin po, Panginoon, yung ating dalawang daang dinaryo para makakain kahit kunti ang mga taong ito. So, parang ganun yung that, 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 that is the scene. And, Bago pa man, bago pa man matapos magsalita si uh, si Felipe, nili, ano na siya, Andrew leaps in to aid him para tulungan siya. Dahil sa, sina, sa pagkakataon yun na kinakabahan siguro si, uh, si, uh, si Felipe kung anong sasabihin niya, anong sasagot niya. Because you know, uh, uh, they, they want for if you are with your teacher, katulad niyan, if you are with your teacher, you wanted all your answers are accepted by your teacher. Yan, di ba? Ganun din tayo sa school. Pinakabang tayo kung di natin, we're not very sure of our answer. So baka hindi ma-please yung ating teacher, hindi siya ma-please sa sagot natin. So, but Andrew, na, and what he did, yan, in verse 8, sinabi sa kanya, ng isa sa kanya mga alagat, si Andres na kapatid ni Simon Pedro, may isang batang lalaki rito na mayroong limang tinapay na sibada at dalawang isda na tapat gaano na ang mga ito sa ganyang karamihan. So it was Andrew among all the, the disciples of Jesus na doon. Si Andrew ang nagligtas kay Pilipe sa ganong pagkakataon na parang na hot seat siya. Parang mapapahiya ako nito kung hindi ako hindi tama yung may sasagot ko. Kaya kailangan maibilang kung mabuti ito at magkano ang gagasusin, mga ganun. So that is what actually is in mind. Yan. Pero this Andrew, umbaga, ano siya, uh, he, he doesn't even know kung anong gagawin sa Pangin- ng Panginoon sa Kristo, paano mapakain ng mga taong iyon. But he know that Christ can do everything. Yan. That Christ can really do miracles to feed these people. So might be si Simon Pedro, alam natin yan, very ano siya, impetuous siya. So might be gumawa na siya agad ng, kumuha na ng sombrero, nagpapaikot ng ulekta na ng pera, posibleng ganun ang ginawa niya. Or si John at saka si James, nagkaka, nagkakasagutan na kung anong mga gagawin nila. E ganyan mga senaryo eh, sa mga, mga ganyang pagkakataon, nagkakagulo na. Yan, magka, anong gagawin natin? Magkakagulo na yan. And even Judas might be, nagbibilang na naghahanap na siya ng contact niya kung kanino siya makakontak na makapaghingi siya ng tubo na makaginansya siya. Might be ganun ang senaryo kasi yan yung laging nasa utak niya. But this Andrew being someone who is just quiet person, yan, minsan lang natin siya makikita sa buhay ng Panginoon sa Kristo, sa nangyari sa buhay ng Panginoon sa Kristo, yun lang siyang ano, pumasok sa eksena. And, Panginoon, may ano dito. And to take note, ayaw na ayaw ng mga disipulo. Uh, hindi naman na ayaw. They, they are not very happy na may mga kids lalapit sa Panginoon. Alam natin yan. But this Andrew, meron siyang nakitang bata. Yung bata pa yun ang inano niya kung anong meron sa bata. Dinala niya sa Panginoon ni si Cristo. How humble it is na he can be a friend with children. Yan. He can approach with children. Yan. Diba? That's a low low profile of a person that can everyone can relate to. Kung everyone can approach. Very, very approachable siya. Even to kids. Eh, yung mga ganun yan eh. Sa panah- even sa panahon natin, pag natatanda ayaw nilang maano sa mga bata or hindi ganun na. Pero may mga... This is the attitude of Andrew. Malapit siya sa, malapit siya sa tao. Malapit yung attached of a person. Talagang attached of a person siya. So we must never, yan, yan yung ano natin dito. This is something na a little, na maliit na bagay, na, na maliit lang na maitutulog, pero may nagagawa siya. So this is something we must never entertain the thought that we have nothing to offer. This is something that we can even do in the Ecclesia na either maliit lang na bagay yun, pero... God is never asked us to do great things. What He wants is just to do what we can do. 
kung ano yung best natin, yun yung kaya natin. May mga marami tayong magagawa sa iklasya natin o paano na paano tayo mag, mag matumulong sa iklesya. Masa magilit na bagay man, ay mahalaga yon sa harapan ng Panginoong Diyos. So that is how Andrew uh, in, in a scene. But alam natin yan, he was again introduced here as Simon Peter's brother, not Andrew. And so, no lang siya. Low key lang siya. Another is how Andrew deals with the Gentiles. Ito yung sabi ko kanina na Andrew, he brings people to Christ. So, siya yung nagdadala ng mga tao sa Panginoon sa Kristo. Even in the beginning, he bring, uh, he, he, siya yung nagdala kay Peter to Jesus yan, to, be convert, to be converted. So, another this is the scenario. Alam, uh, uh, dito nakita natin magkasama si Philip and, 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 and uh, Andrew dito sa scenario na ito. This again is Philip and Andrew. Magkita natin this these two are really close. Sila yung nag, nag they can relate with each other. Alam naman pag if you can relate kasi tao close to you. So this is the final of final scene also that we can encounter and do and that is in John chapter 12 verses 20 to 23. Yan. So tingnan natin yung John 12 20 to 23. In verse 20, sabi dito, may, uh, it actually happened in, during the time of the uh, Passover. Yan. And, and tingnan natin sa verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany. And so it actually happened during the Passover. And that during that Passover, may mga pumupunta doon na mga... Hin- Kasi sa panahon ito, may mga... Tinatawag tayong proselytes. I'm sure you're familiar with proselytes. Proselytes, these are non-Jew, but they believe the same belief of the Jews. Yan. Naniniwala sila sa paniniwala ng mga Hudyo. So, meaning to say, they believe in God. They, they believe in the in the law of Moses. Yan. Instead of believing those mga gods and goddesses na mga Gentiles. Especially, They are Greeks, and Greeks, they believe in a lot of mga gods and goddesses. Like Greek, Greeks mythology, mga ganon. Yan. So in verse 19 muna, uh, at mga parisiyong nga nagsang usapan, tini, uh, tingnan ninyo kung paano kayo walang anumang ikapanig. Narito ang sanglibutan. Sa so, 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 verse 20, mayroon ngang ilang Grego na nagsiahon sa kapistahan upang magsisamba. So may mga pumunta doon sa Jerusalem to, to, to the feast, to worship at the feast. And in verse 21, ang mga ito nga ay nagsilapit kay Pilepe. So si Pilepe ang nilapitan nila. So ma- probably... The, uh, ito ba kilala ni Philip or because Philip is someone na madaling ano, ma- malapitan siya kasi hindi hindi nakakahiya yung mitsura niya kasi mali, ano lang siya eh, low key lang siya na tao we don't really know but it was Philip um, in approach nila nagsilapit sila kay Philip eh, na taga Bitsaida ng Galilea at nagsipa manhik sa kanya na sinasabi ginoo Ibig sana namin makita si Jesus. Yan, yan yung ano nila. And what happened is, lumapit si, in verse 22, Philip cometh and tell Andrew, and again, Andrew and Philip tell to Jesus. So lumapit si Philip, nung nilapitan siya ng mga grigong ito, mga Gentiles na ito, na ginoo, ibig sana namin makita si Jesus. Nung sinabing ito, hindi niya alam kung anong gagawin niya. For sure, mapapaisip siya, should I, should I uh, bring them to Christ? And, but they're Gentiles. They're not Jews. Yan. So alam natin yan na there, mga allergies sila sa, ano, sa mga Gentiles. May pagka-allergies sila. Yan. So but what happened is, dahil sa doubt niya yun, hindi niya alam kung anong gagawin niya, kanino siya lumapit? Kanino siya Uh, humingin ng tulong. 
and two are very close to him also, a yeah, very approachable din, and it was Andrew. So, makikita natin dito, lumapit siya kay Andrew, and lumapit si Pilipe at sinabi kay Andres, lumapit si, uh, uh, lumapit si Andres at sinabi Pilipe, at uh, ano ba ito? Lumapit si Pilipe at sinabi kay Andres. Yan. Ngayon naman, lumapit si Andres at si Pilipe sa kanya, sa kanilang sa kanilang sinabi kay Jesus. Yan. So, makikita natin dito na uh, so ito yun na uh, to to who the dust will it turn to him uh, to help him approach Christ his toward companion Andrew. Andrew takes the lead. Yan. So it was Andrew takes the lead. Kasi kung mapapansin natin dyan, in the second part dito, Andres, Andrew, and Philip. It's no longer Philip. Yan. Philip approach to Andrew. Tinanong niya kung pwede. At ngayon naman, Andrew and Philip. So it was Andrew who takes the lead. Yan. So ganun siya. So he's really a leader in, in you know, but, but a heart of a servant. Yan, so si Philip na yan. So Andrew surely have been familiar with the passages such as Isaiah 56, 6 to 7. Maaaring alam niya ito. Bakit niya alam ito? Dahil si Juan Bautista madalas sa kanya mga sinasabi at inuturo ay ang mga kasulatan na babasa sa Isaiah. Mga patungkol sa Lamb of God, patungkol sa Kristo, sa Mesias. Yan. So might be prob- or probably he knew that Christ, uh, that Gentiles can also be Christ followers. So ito yun, Philippe, should we bring these Gentiles into an audience with our Lord? Andrew, whenever not, why ever not, Philip, is he not Lord of the whole earth? Yan. At maano natin yan, uh, kung bubuksan natin, uh, if you have time, you can read in Isaiah 56 verse 6 to 7. Sa kaduluduluhan yan, mababasa natin dito na uh, Nababasa natin doon. Ano ba yun? Yan na. Nababasa natin na my house uh, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. So the house of God is a house for all people. So that belong that that means Gentiles also asama sila hindi lang yung mga Jews. And yun. So ano ginawa ni Felipe? Inilapit nila ang mga hintel sa Panginoong si Kristo. So again he brings people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is always his job. And So our ecclesia need Ecclesias need Andrew. Yeah, we also need Andrew. We need those who in wisdom are prepared to work quietly behind the scenes for the good of the Ecclesia. For the good of the Ecclesia, hindi yung para you will be praised, you will be ikaw yung, you will be great, and you will be kilalanin, ganun. but it's always because for the good of the Ecclesia. Even in a quiet uh, quietly help. Yeah. So we need someone like Andrew in our Ecclesia. And for sure, alam po yan, kasi I've been in many Ecclesias, marami tayong mga kapatid na ganyan na tumutulong, hindi man, lang, hindi man sila nakikilala o hindi na ano, pero, uh, ano sila um, tumutulong sa Ecclesia. So Andrew, a fisher of men. Yeah, and, and, and that is the, the scene where also Christ called them. Uh, alam natin na uh, may, tanong, may tanong na ano bang nauna yung tinawag sila sa, ng Panginoong Heso Kristo na sila ay nangingisda or sa panahon nung si Andrew ay sumunod sa Panginoong kasama si Juan. And I believe na it, the first scene was when John the Baptist telling them that this is the Lamb of God. The scene naman nung nangingisda sila were actually kasi hindi sila sumunod sa Panginoon sa Kristo. And that is one of the reasons why Peter said, I am not worthy of you. I am not worthy. Kasi di ba nakadakuha sila na maraming isda. 
I am not worthy. Kasi hindi sila sumunod. They have seen him already. They knew and they have heard what Jesus had also te- been telling them. Kasi sumama si, lalo lang lalo na si Ando, sumama siya. But you know, Peter is always the head of them. So Ando might be just following Peter. So that might be the scenario, but we don't really know. But this is the same also. that They are also called Jesus. They are being called by Jesus to be fishers of men. Yan. So in Mark 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 17, yan, as uh, has already been noted, it shows Andrew bringing people to the Lord Jesus. His passion was for discussing the gospel with anyone who loved to listen. He's someone na handang-handa na magkwento, mag, magsalita patungkol sa Panginoong sa Christo to anyone who wanted to listen. Even members of the Ecclesia, laging pinag-usapan is, uh, are the word of God. Uh, yan yung laging bukang bibig niya, laging bukang bibig. And that is Andrew, that is someone like Andrew. Yan. Although not a speaker in the pedestal or in front, but Andrew is a master of a quiet conversation. Hindi man siya yung katulad ng mga uh, disipulo or mga kapatid na nandun magaling masalita sa harapan. In, in the crowd, he can ha- merong confidence to face the crowd, to talk to this big crowd, but he is a quiet converse uh, he, he he talks he he, he preached in a quiet conversation and that is andrew diba nakaka impress so i'm actually impressed kasi uh, we we for sure we all knew someone like andrew yeah sa pagiging kasi dapat natin for many years we have met for sure we have met someone like him the greek word for fisher man is uh halius is not actually related to fish at, fish at all. Hindi siya isda. But it is actually derived from salt. Asin siya. Uh, someone who works upon the salt water. Yan. Yan yung fisher men. The salt was also added to all sacrifices under Mosaic law. Such was the character of Andrew. He has the ability to act as a preservative to prevent corruption to remain pure. He's someone who helped the Ecclesia to be to building the Ecclesia na it 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 would stand. Na yung Ecclesia na yon ma preserve siya. Yung Ecclesia na yon ay uh, might be magkakaroon ng mga problema. Is someone who was who, who is always there na tumutulong para magiging matatag ang Ecclesia or kapatid. Andrew's name means actually manly or strong man. But he exhibits true strength, not man's brutish force. Hindi yung pagiging brusco. But the strength of quiet determination that comes from the devotion to the word of God. And that is Andrew. Yung pangalan niya, it's actually mean, it means manly, strong man. Pero hindi, si Pedro ang kadon. Si Pedro ang ganun na talagang you know, ma- malakas, laging laging ano susugod but he's not someone like that behind siya full back lagi siyang magpo full back and quiet siya and he takes time he takes time to assist things and dun saka siya gumagalaw so that's Andrew mga kapatid Andrew's end life yan in history it's actually in in Russia he's actually the saint of Russia in the town Saint Andrew kaya makikita natin yung flag ng Russia may cross siya because that's actually a sign for the the, the attribute to Andrew as the saint of Russia Andrew preached to the Scythians and that is the modern day Georgia the Scythians modern day Bulgaria and was crucified suspended on an olive tree at Patria, a town of Achaia, which is Greece. And there too, he was buried. Yung dahilan daw, I'm not very, very good at history, pero ang na, na ano ko, narinig ko, kasi I was listening some of the, in the video, uh, in YouTube, ang naging dahilan because uh, there was a Roman, uh, Roman uh, governor, a Roman governor, yung asawa niya, nakarinig ng turo ni Andrew and she believes tinanggap niya he accepted the the the, the teaching about the gospel ni tinuro ni Andrew and ayon nagalit siya 
And another is yung mismong kapatid niya nakarinig din. And yun nga tinanggap din. At sabi niya, bawiin mo ang sinabi mo sa kanila para hindi na sila maging Christian. Kasi naniniwala na mga yun. At alam niyan, Romans. They are Romans. Pag may member of their family are Christian, ay pwede silang alisin sa kanilang ano sa kanilang katungkulan or malaking kahihiyan yun sa kanila. So that's the reason why na ginawa siya ng pamaraan siya ay maipapatay. So he was actually being hanged on an olive tree in a, in a shape of a cross. So yan yung kinamatay niya. And he was buried there in Greece. So now, this is actually uh, for the last slide, na ano no, second to the last slide, in Isaiah 30 verse 15, which reads, This is what the Sovereign Lord, this is what the Sovereign Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel says, In repentance and rest is your salvation. Maliligtas tayo sa if we have uh, rep- repent and rest in, is our salvation. But also in quietness, And trust is your strength. So in some other version, this is quietness and confidence. I think in in uh, in in the uh, tawag nito King James confidence atasha. So it's in quietness and confidence. Tingnan natin yung Isaiah 30. verse 15. Sabi dito, uh, sapagkat ganito ang sabi ng Panginoong Diyos ng panal ng Esra sa pagba, pagbabalik at sa pagpapahing, pagpapahinga, pagbabalik at pagpapahinga ay matitiwasay kayo. Sa katahimikan at sa pag-asa ay magiging, magiging ang inyong lakas. So, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And you would not. Yeah. So in quietness and confidence is your strength. So quietness in Hebrew means repose. And repose means calm, relaxed, free from all's anxiety, to be still, to lie down with support underneath. So ito yung something na, ano mga mangyayari dyan? Okay lang, kalma lang ako. Alam ko magiging okay ang lahat. So ganun yan. So that is what, Uh, someone Andrew is na sa mga sin na kato, he is someone quiet lang siya but he was there helping and there is he, he, kaya nanatili siyang very strong strength sa kanya even hindi siya pinili sa leaders na tatlo only Peter, James, and John even na siya ang mga nandala nito tumulong sa kanilang maka, maka, makalapit sa Panginoon sa Kristo pero He was still quiet and that quiet service as, as a follower of Christ. So he's confident. He's confident that what he's doing is uh, all for the good, for the Ecclesia. Yan, yan siya. So even us, if we have quietness and confidence, that is our strength. Di ba, mga kapatid? Uh, ano mang mangyari sa mundong ito, mangyari sa buhay natin, stay calm. It's, we should have the confidence and that confidence give us strength. We will be more stronger. And because we, we because pag tayo ay hindi na confident, we are no longer quiet and confident, meaning wala ka nang tiwala sa Diyos. Ibig sabihin, kulang ka sa pananampalataya mo. Kulang ka sa pananiniwala mo sa Panginoon sa Kristo sa mga sinabi niya na babalik siya. At gagantihin palaan tayo. So, yan yan. So, even ko, uh, Peter, nung siya ay gusto niyang lumakad, eh, biglang nawalan siya ng confidence. So, what happened? Nawalan siya ng lakas. Dahan-dahan siyang nalulunod. So, I hope, guys, we have learned a lot from the life of Andrew. Yan. And for the last slide, yan, even our Lord Jesus Christ alam natin na he is someone who perfected being quiet or being or being calm and nothing evil na lumabas sa kanyang bibig. The love of Christ in the heart makes one like Christ. 
Uh, ito muna sa Isaiah 53.7, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its tears, so he did not open his mouth. So katulad siya ng lamb being dinala in the slaughterhouse. And like a sheep na niinano na, kinakatay na. But the sheep, alam natin yan, na still silent kahit kinakatay na siya. Kahit na ginugupitan na siya, they never opened their mouth. And that is Christ. And that really happened nung siya ay uh, in, nalipusta na siya para ipako sa Christ. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he, not, he did not open his mouth. He remained quiet because he's confident that this will pass. That in the three in third three days, kasi lagi niya sinasabi yan, sa tatlong araw siya ay mabubuhayin, may aakyat siya sa ama. Alam niya yun. He's confident for that. So tayo din, we should be confident of what hope we have in our hand. We have that hope. We should be confident of that. Na kahit anong mangyayari, kahit ngayon, mamatay tayo but we die in Christ. Happy tayo. Kasi mamatay tayo na alam natin na may pag-asa tayo, mabubuhay muli at mananahan ng habang buhay kasama pa inyong si Kristo. So we should be confident of that. The Lord Jesus Christ, yan, the love of Christ in the heart makes one like Christ. So if we have that love of Christ in our heart, makes one like Christ. For he was quiet, He was never flustered. He never fumed or fused. He was never anxious or worried. He never spoke impatiently. His voice was never heard on the street. Hindi siya nagkasalita ng masama. There was a calmness in him that showed itself in every word he spoke, in all his bearing. And that is Christ. So, yun mga kapatid. May we too be blessed with the strength of Andrew as we too work for our Lord, awaiting the soon return of his son. Thank you, Lord.